Hello and welcome students to another lab. This is lab 10, our final lab of this spring semester, uh, in which we are going to be looking at the uh, mass percent of acetic acid in vinegar. Uh, to accomplish the you know, calculation of figuring out what the mass percent of acetic acid in vinegar is, we are going to be performing a titration. As you can see here, we are going to be titrating the acetic acid with sodium hydroxide. The acetic acid is the CH3COOH in uh, the reaction as a reactant. Of course, sodium hydroxide is the NaOH. The reaction that is undergone is a complete reaction since the weak acid is being titrated with a strong base. The strong base uh, is going to push this reaction to completion. The products then are going to be CH3COO minus, this acetate ion, uh, along with some sodium plus. Sodium acetate is a completely soluble compound in solution, so we will be seeing a complete dissociation of that product, uh, as well as some water that is produced. Now at the equivalence point of this reaction, which is how uh, any meaningful information from a titration is gathered, especially if we are working with trying to determine an unknown concentration, which we are in this case, our acetate or acetic acid concentration is unknown, hence the titration with a strong base, which will have a known concentration. At the equivalence point, when both of these reactants are used up, we are going to have only conjugate base present that we will be able to meaningfully measure what its concentration is. The conjugate base that is present in solution will lead to a pH that is not a neutral 7 in solution, but rather an 8.7. We will be working with a slightly basic pH uh, when we are at the equivalence point. Now this is going to be useful information for us because when we are working uh, with a titration where one of the concentrations of our species is unknown, we have to have some way to mark when we are at the equivalence point. Now what we are going to do uh, to accomplish this as a you know, visual aid for when we are at the equivalence point of this reaction is we are going to be adding an indicator known as phenolphthalein to the solution. Phenolphthalein uh, is a weak acid unto itself when added into solution in acetic uh, or acidic conditions, the uh, solution is going to appear colorless. Um, however, when some base is added to solution, we are going to end up with a shift in the equilibrium where the base is going to be interacting with that H plus that is present from the dissociation of the weak acid phenolphthalein, which is going to shift the equilibrium of the phenolphthalein in solution towards its negative uh, counter ion, its negative conjugate base form, which is pink in solution. Now the way that phenolphthalein is going to help us is that the end point of this indicator is a pH of 8.3, meaning that when our solution in its acidic form, our weak acid, our acetic acid, is going to be colorless um, when we add phenolphthalein to it. As we titrate our uh, acetic acid and add some OH- into solution, we are actually not just titrating the... Uh, the weak acid, the acetic acid, we are also going to be working with phenolphthalein kind of behind the scenes. And if we shift the weak acid of acetic acid to the equivalence point, if we add enough OH- to completely use up all of that acetic acid, we are only going to have the conjugate base present in solution with a pH of around 8.7. Uh, and the end point of phenolphthalein is really close to that 8.3, meaning that the phenolphthalein will turn pink around the same time that we reach the equivalence point of the reaction between acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. In other words, we are going to be performing a titration between the acetic acid and the sodium hydroxide right up until we hit its equivalence point, which is when the solution is going to turn pink thanks to our phenolphthalein. All right, so now let's get into the lab situation. We are going to be uh, performing a titration using this piece of glassware known as a burette. A burette is like a very long graduated pipette. It goes even off the screen vertically uh, from where I'm just showing it here, doing a pan up and pan down. The total volume of this particular burette is 50 milliliters. 
Um, I'm not anticipating using all 15 milliliters in one titration. It's actually a really good rule of thumb to pick a burette that you're expecting to use about half of its volume. In this burette currently, I have 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. I'm going to be titrating vinegar. Right, our goal here is to find what's the mass percent of acetic acid in vinegar, particularly does this commercial uh, version of Heinz meet FDA standards. Um, sadly, the uh, vinegar itself is too concentrated in acetic acid to actually perform a meaningful titration. So what I'm gonna do is extract 10 milliliters and then dilute it to a total volume of 250 using this volumetric flask. So off screen, that's what I'm doing here, boom, diluted. Uh, vinegar is now present, and this is the solution that we are going to be able to titrate using our 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So I'm going to move the uh, vinegar out of the way here and uh, extract about 50 milliliters of the uh, dilute version of the acetic or of the uh, vinegar with a di diluted concentration also of the acetic acid as a result. I'm going to pour this into an Erlenmeyer flask. Erlenmeyer flasks are actually really nifty pieces of glassware since the glassware is shaped to prevent spillage when you are swirling it to stir. All right, so last but not least, in order to uh, perform a meaningful titration, we're gonna have to add some phenolphthalein as an indicator. Uh, so notice as I take a couple drops of the phenolphthalein out and drop them into the flask, uh, we don't see any color change here. And that is because we, again, are working with a weak acid. This acetic acid is going to keep our phenolphthalein in its colorless, weak acidic form. So I give it a stir, everything's mixed and ready to rock and roll. So we are going to start this titration by uh, turning the spigot as we could see that I just did. And now there is some NaOH that is being slowly added uh, down into the flask. The titration again will be complete once we hit a pink solution. However, since the uh, concentration of the acetic acid is unknown, I'm not quite sure exactly what volume we are going to need of the sodium hydroxide to reach the equivalence point. What this means is that the first titration that I'm performing here, I'm not actually expecting to use as a trial with meaningful results. I'm just adding enough sodium hydroxide to be able to see when approximately am I going to hit my equivalence point. That way I can perform a second titration, uh, you know, or multiple trials after this and kind of have an idea as to when the equivalence point is going to be hit. Now here we can see that I'm probably getting pretty close since the pink uh, color in solution is kind of hanging around a little bit. Um, turning the spigot off, stirring, seeing it goes away, we turn the spigot on again, we see that the color is here now to stay. Now sadly this is uh, an overshot titration. The color is way too vibrant. I have definitely added too much sodium hydroxide, possibly only by a couple of drops, maybe a milliliter, but I know approximately where the uh, equivalence point is. It was around like 23 milliliters of acetic or of the NaOH that I added to the acetic acid. So here now I'm performing a second titration. I have this uh, volume, this total volume in mind as I undergo the titration. So I'm kind of watching out once I get around uh, like 20, 21 ish milliliters added, I'm probably going to slow down the titration just to a drop by drop addition of the sodium hydroxide. Uh, I'm swirling uh, as I go, stirring that solution. Want to make sure that I'm not getting uh, like an artificial buildup of sodium hydroxide in one place. I want to make sure that that uh, titration, this neutralization is occurring throughout the entire flask. All right, trying to be careful here as any good titration uh, is going to be undergone. We want the faintest of color changes. So what I'm looking for here is what I call the faintest of pinks. Uh, the way I normally run this lab is I give a little bit of extra credit to whomever actually gets the faintest of pinks during the, their titration, but spoiler, the way I, I actually do it is if everyone gets faint pinks, everyone gets extra credit in this lab. And so here we can see now I have added just enough sodium hydroxide to get a very faint pink. Uh, while I'm stirring, it looks uh, almost like colorless, but as it's sitting on that white piece of paper, you can see that there is a tinge of pink, meaning that the titration is perfectly finished. Now I did three trials of uh, this titration, of this experiment, so that way we have three data points with which to average. The uh, best data points to use in a titration experiment um, are going to be data points that are going to be very, very close in measurement. So here we can see that the titration of these three trials um, 
as the end point was reached between the dilute vinegar solution and the uh, sodium hydroxide are all very, very close, meaning that there is very little error in this measurement uh, or in these three measurements here. Uh, meaning that any calculation we get of the mass percent of the acetic acid in this dilute vinegar are going to be very reliable. Um, all right, so here uh, we are going to call the visual component of this lab assignment complete. Uh, please use this information, the volumes of sodium hydroxide used, to complete the corresponding worksheet that you guys can find on Blackboard.